This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. I'm Cameron Harris, and this is episode number seven. Now, today we're going to be talking about the line and the arc tools in SketchUp, and these are really some of SketchUp's most powerful drawing tools. Because everything in SketchUp is made up of lines, by using the line tool, you can draw any shape that you can possibly imagine, whether it be a two-dimensional, three-sided triangle, or whether it's a three-dimensional shape with hundreds of sides. It doesn't really matter. You can do it with the line tool and the arc tool. Now they're a little bit complex, so let's go ahead and look at some of the features they have. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch this uh, empty project I've got prepared here. And you can see there's nothing in the project, but we're going to change that very soon. So we're going to be learning about the line tool and the arc tool. So why don't we start with the uh, the line tool. Uh, it's up in your toolbar or in your tool palette right here. And uh, you can see it's this little pencil thing right here. Now, as always, you can either click on it in the toolbar or in the tool palette, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which for the line tool is the letter L. So if I were to, for example, switch over to the select tool, I need to get into the line tool. I just tap the letter L. You can see my cursor turns into that nice little pencil. So I'm all set to start drawing my lines. Now the lines are similar to the rectangle tool, except that with the rectangle tool, uh, when you click and drag, you're creating, let me show you, you're creating a four-sided rectangle. So you can see if I move over this, all the corners are 90 degrees, everything is connected, so it automatically creates a face. But remember that objects in SketchUp are made up of faces and lines. And these individual lines are what make up the faces, actually, because only when a line is containing a face on all sides can a face actually exist. So if I were to remove this line, it breaks the connection and that face disappears. But these lines here still remain. And these are the kinds of lines that you will be drawing with the line tool. So for example, say I wanted to connect these two lines here, draw, redraw that line between them. What I can do is I can go into the line tool and I can click. You see how I get that little green dot? It snaps to the end of that line, which is very nice. See if I hover over it, it says end point. It's how it pretty much all tools in SketchUp really will snap to other objects, endpoints, or just coast along the edge of this line, come to the midpoint right there, or this corner right here, snaps to all kinds of stuff, which is really helpful. So if I just click at this endpoint here, you can see I'm now drawing this black line. So if I were to click here, for example, it would go there, and it keeps a chain, so I can just keep clicking, kind of like connecting the dots. But let's say I didn't want to do that. I'll just undo this. Click at this point here. This snaps to this point right here. I click, and it recreates that face. But you notice something happened there. When I clicked and drew here, you notice, once I snap to that point, that line actually turns green. Now, why does it turn green? Well, this is another feature of SketchUp that's very nice in terms of just snapping things. You see, it, mostly, the line that I'm drawing is black. But every now and then, it snaps. There's, it snaps to red, snaps to blue, it snaps to green. Well, remember, we have these axes here uh, in the very center of our model. And these axes are there to really kind of really just help us out with our modeling, uh, kind of orienting ourselves. It's sort of like north, south, east, and west. This is like your compass. You notice that there's this line here, the green axis, which is sort of like the, um, it's one of the left and right axis. It's difficult to say whether it's left and right, because right now it's left and right, but then you go to this orientation and it's back and forth. So I, I, I tend to just call it the green axis. Um, you'll notice that this rectangle that we drew 
by default, rectangles will always snap to that axis. So if I draw another rectangle here, you'll notice that those lines, all those sides are parallel to the green and red axis. I can't really draw like a diamond shape or anything like that, at least not right now. The lines work in a similar way in that when they are going running perfectly parallel to those other lines, like right now, I know that this line is running parallel to the green axis because it is actually turning green. You see, if I just hover, I get a little pop-up that says on green axis. This is really nice because then I can know, for example, let's say I didn't want to connect all the way. I only want to draw a line part way here. I want to stop like right here. Normally, I wouldn't really know, uh, is that that's kind of close, but is that really it? No, it's kind of off. I can know that right there, boom, that is exactly the angle that I want, and then I can click, I can move out, and you can see now it's turning red because I'm running parallel to this red axis down here. That's good, click, snap to the green axis. And you can see right there, when I hover, I get a little red dotted line, meaning that right there, it's snapping to the end of this line over here. So I know that if I click here and then click here, I still have perfect right angles and I have a perfect, I mean, this could easily be a room right here. And all the angles are perfect, everything's lined up, everything's matching, everything's very crisp and clean. This is a perfect shape. So the line tool is very useful for that. But let's say, for example, that you purposefully wanted to snap to one of these axes, say you wanted to snap to the green one, but you're having trouble getting there or you know you want to well here's a good example of something let's say I draw a quick little thing right here and I'm having trouble getting this thing to where I want this green line to be the exact same length as this line here but I want to stay on the green axis but I'm having trouble getting it to snap very nice shortcut for this is the arrow keys if you tap the arrow keys on your keyboard it will basically lock the line tool or the rectangle tool or whatever tool you're using to a certain axis. So if I tap the left arrow key, you notice right now, no matter where my pointer is, I could have my pointer way over here, my line is always running perfectly parallel to that green axis. It never changes the angle, although I do get a nice little red dotted line connecting my pointer to that green thing. Now what's nice about this and the reason you would want this is that I can then just hover my pointer over here to that end point right there. And you can see it, it actually says constrained on line from point. So I know that although this is running perfectly parallel to the green axis, I can just hover it right over here, click. I know it's perfect. I click again. You see it's a red line right on the red axis and boom. Now the same exact thing uh, with the red axis. If I tap the right arrow key, it snaps to the red axis. So the right arrow key for red, the left arrow key for green. It's pretty pretty easy to remember, and if it doesn't work, you can just keep, let's say, oh no, didn't mean to snap to the red axis. Tap the left arrow key, it snaps you to the green. Now let's talk about this blue line here in the middle of the axis, this blue line which is going straight up and down, vertical. Well, that's exactly what it's doing. It is the height of everything. So if I were to click on this endpoint right here, for example, I'm drawing this line, but I want this line to go straight up. I just tap either the up or the down arrow keys. Now, the, either the up or down arrow keys work. It's not like with uh, the red and green axis where each one has its own button. Either the up or down buttons will work. You see, it turns blue, which means I am going straight up and down. So I can go wherever I want and click. And then you notice that unless you, like if I click on this endpoint right here, my the line tool stops. But if I were to just draw a line here, well you see because I didn't click on an endpoint, I'm still floating in empty space, it thinks that I want to draw another line from this point. So, and I can just keep clicking all I want, but I can't get out of the line tool. How do I stop drawing these lines? All you have to do, if you're in this thing where you've got this line attached to your cursor and you don't want it there, all you have to do is hit the escape key. And that cancels whatever action you're currently in the middle of. This works if you're drawing a rectangle, for example, and oh, don't really want to do that rectangle. 
normally you would have to click create the rectangle and then hit undo but it's a lot simpler to just you're in the middle of it you hit the escape key and boom it's just gone so that's very nice so now let me get rid of this stuff here and show you where our dimensions box so you remember when we talked about the rectangle tool we talked about this little dimensions box right here let me show you where that comes into play with the line tool you notice when I switch to the line tool that little thing right there says length now not dimensions that word kind of changes depending on what tool you're in but it, it's always meaning the same thing so let's say for example I want to draw an odd shape but I have some very specific measurements I want to do I can click here and then I can maybe hit the left arrow key to snap to the green axis just to make sure I'm nice and clean and let's say I want this to be a two and a half foot long line well just like with the rectangle tool while I'm still you know in the process of drawing I haven't clicked anything yet while I'm still in the process of drawing I can just type 2.5 feet remember the apostrophe means that it's a foot hit it and you can see it instantly draws that line which is exactly two and a half feet so then I could do this again where I could uh, snap to the red axis now and say make this uh, one foot and let's say I wanted to use the green axis come back here go for maybe one and a half feet so maybe this time I'll say one foot six and remember if you don't put an apostrophe it means inches hit enter or return and it draws that line as well come over here maybe another six inches and then over here now in this case I want it to stop right here so I just constrain to the green line or just constrain to the green axis by hitting the left arrow key hover over my point right here click click and now I've got this uh, nice kind of long room it could be or it could be a sign or it could be really anything you want and uh, that's a very nice way to use the line tool now let's talk for a minute about the arc tool because it's very similar but with some slight differences the arc tool is right up here in the toolbar and it's this kind of cur half circle almost right here and you can see it says arc you can also find it in your tool palette or you can use the keyboard shortcut for it which is the letter A for arc tap that and you notice I get a similar icon uh, for my cursor I get a nice little pencil but I also get a sort of a curved line next to it and that lets me know I'm in the arc tool now let's just treat this just like the line tool for a second I click okay so I click one point and now I've got this line coming out okay that's pretty easy I'll constrain to the green axis and come out oh if I and you notice if I watch my length it's working just like the line tool where I can dynamically see okay I'm about eh, roughly one foot there kind of that's close enough click but the line isn't done now I can stretch this left and right and create an arc or you know have it be just a nice little curve I could have it be a big circle or something like that have it go out like this maybe this is really useful for building curved rooms or building archways anything where you need just a curved line but you don't really need a whole circle so this is very useful but you'll notice look at our little dimensions box down there now it says bulge and that's saying how far out the bulge of this arc is going to be so you notice if we just snap this right back to the middle and make it almost like a straight line you notice the bulge if it was really a straight line the bulge would say zero it's kinda hard to get there but bulge is very small like an eighth of an inch but if we move it out this way you see it starts to say oh it's about seven inches eight inches nine inches let's say we want this to have a three inch bulge I could just type in the number three and then enter and you see we've got the perfect arc but you notice this is something to kind of think about and we'll be talking about this more when we go over the circle tool but you notice if I draw a quick little arc here and bulge it out you notice as I get more is if I do too much of a bulge you notice it doesn't really look like an arc anymore it doesn't look like a smooth line you see that you start to see these individual these individual lines right here boom there's a point 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 it doesn't look very smooth anymore whereas when it, we weren't doing that much of a bulge it was looking very smooth well that's because 
there aren't really any curved lines in SketchUp. Instead, there are, the, this is what an, an arc or a circle actually looks like. It's just a lot of straight lines set up where they're all connecting each other and they all just kind of meet at these points and they have slight angle differences and they keep kind of curving back in on each other. When it's a small line or there's not that much of a bulge, you don't notice that. But you get too big, you do notice that. And you also notice an arc, it doesn't treat them as individual lines. You tap one of these lines and it selects all of them. So if we were to delete this, let's say we wanted this arc to be much smoother. It was supposed to be a big arc. We want it to be really smooth. You also sometimes need to do this if um, whatever you're drawing, the arc itself is like really huge. Say it's like a 50 foot arc. You can get away with it for a one foot arc, but a 50 foot arc is gonna need some differences. Again, we're gonna go right down to our measurements box. And you see right now it says sides and then it has the number 12. That means that whatever arc we draw, let me just draw a quick one here. You see that once we start drawing, the sides goes away, but if we make this really big, you can actually count them. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 line segments making up this arc, or 12 sides. So for a big arc, the way to get around this kind of chunky looking um, arc is to actually add more sides. So what you can do is, when you first switch to the arc tool, before you start drawing, before you click or anything like that, you notice that you get this sides box. Once you start drawing, the sides box goes away, so you want to make your decision early on. Let's say instead of 12 segments, we want this to be 24 segments. That's a good number. Double it. All we have to do is enter in 24 and then return. And then you can see it's a, the box is turned a little bit yellow. It's letting us know we have a custom number in there. I click. I click again. And now you see when I go out, it's looking much smoother. Now if I get too big again, you start to see more line segments, so I might need to crank up the number a little bit. But it even at something like this, which is where we were before roughly, it's still looking much, much smoother. Now one thing you do want to keep in mind is that if you have too many of these segments, so for example, if I were to say, oh, make this, you know, make this 100 sides, it would work. I could click and I could draw and it would make it out, out of a hundred and it looks you know, very, very smooth and everything. But the problem is, is that SketchUp now has to process a hundred lines where, you know, if you're just doing a bulge or an arc like this, you really only need maybe 12, maybe not even 12, maybe 10. And the more lines and faces you have in SketchUp, the more power you're going to need to get out of your computer to view these things and eventually SketchUp may start to slow down. So you do want to keep that in mind, try and keep these curves very simple because they can eat up your processing power very quickly. And there you have it. That's the line tool and the arc tool. Like I said before, they are really very powerful but they're actually pretty easy to use and you can create absolutely anything with them. And it's sometimes fun to just go into SketchUp and trace around just randomly, make some bizarre shapes, and then extrude them into 3D with the push-pull tool. Until our next episode, be sure to visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. There you can find our show notes, download lesson files, and uh, participate in the forums if you want. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback for this show, send us an email at harwoodpodcast at comcast.net. I hope you found this episode useful. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.